and welcome to the Scholar Progenium. Today we're going to be discussing snipers. Now I think everyone out there in the bolt action community has a love-hate relationship with snipers. So let's have a bit of a deep dive into how we can get the most juice out of them in our games of bolt action. So let's have a brief glance over the history of the sniper. Now, just like in our games of bolt action, funnily enough, sniping has fallen in and out of favour across the militaries of the world um, over the past century or so. And this isn't about their performance or their capacity as a weapon system, but actually it's a question of honour. In the early stages of World War I and World War II, uh, sniping was considered particularly dishonourable. Just the idea of shooting a man in cold blood who may not be actively engaged in combat with you at that moment, um, you know, is, was frowned upon by especially the powers that be, you know, the old Prussian uh, staff officers and commanders of the German army and so on and so forth. And this was actually such a thing that really until after Stalingrad in the German army, uh, snipers weren't really an official trained position uh, in the German army. In fact, that was the same in the UK. They got rid of their sniper school between World War I and World War II and had to sort of re-establish and relearn the skill. So just very interesting. It's only in sort of recent decades that the position of sniper um, within a military force has sort of become established as uh, you know, taken for granted. It's just a role that is fulfilled. Now, with that being said, let's have a look at snipers in bolt action. Now, very simply, most uh, factions can only take them as regular or veteran. And as a general rule, they cost 50 points, like a standard two-man weapons team for your regular option and 65 points for a veteran. The fins here, which I'm going to talk about in a second, slightly different. They're 55 or 72 points, but they do come with the Master of the Hunt special ability, and that slight point increase is an absolute bargain for what you can achieve with Master of the Hunt. But, you know, overall, cheap, simple, and they don't take up a different weapon slot. You're not having to choose between a heavy anti-tank gun or a medium howitzer or something like that. A sniper slot is a sniper slot, so if you take this dice, it's not taking away from other areas of your list, apart from points. And we've got to remember that taking extra dice in itself is always very valuable. I don't need to tell you guys that the initiative dice mechanic is a core fundamental part of the game of bolt action. So what's the problem with snipers? Well, on this channel, we call it the curse of the sniper. And it's the idea that a lot of the time it feels like your sniper is not doing much. But then when you face an opponent with a sniper, all of a sudden he's picking off your weapons teams, your officer's been shot. And it's, you know, just this roller coaster where you go through periods of taking a sniper, then you go through periods where you won't touch a sniper with a barge pole. And I've had to think about this and thanks to collecting fins for the past year and running them competitively and um, i've actually learned a lot about snipers in general and that sort of carried over into my other games although the finnish sniper does work slightly differently a lot of the lessons i've learned do apply to say the british sniper the german sniper etc etc so i just wanted to share those little tidbits with you now and um, so you can get more consistency out of this admittedly very valuable unit when it's played right now, let me shine a spotlight, first of all, on a rarely known aspect of the sniper unit, which allows them to avoid prep bombardment. Now, if you read the prep bombardment rule carefully, it only targets units in the deployment zone. So if you have forward placed your sniper and your opponent's rolling a prep bombardment against you, do not let them roll a dice against your sniper because, because he's in a forward position, he's not in your setup zone he does not come under the targeting parameters for prep bombardment. So if nothing else, take that little tip away with you from this video. Next up, let's talk about whether you wanna take veteran or regular snipers. Now, I personally, if I'm taking a sniper, I will almost always take a veteran sniper. And there's a couple of reasons for this. First of all, in sniper duels, 
if you're fighting against someone who's taken a regular sniper, nine times out of 10, you will, after a couple of shots have been exchanged, unless your opponent gets lucky, odds on, you'll win that sniper duel. And that's a dice out the bag for you, and your sniper can get on with his day job. Another reason why I take a veteran sniper is because technically this is a weapons team, and if the spotter gets killed, your sniper will be a permanent minus one to hit. And as soon as your sniper's hitting on a four up, he's out of the game, not literally, but he's not getting the main benefit of a sniper, which is that reliability of basically always hitting on a three up. So as soon as he's almost always hitting on a four up, you know, it changes the nature of how the unit operates. Whereas if he's veteran and he takes a burst of fire for some small arms and you know, that's much more likely to just cause a pin and not actually lose the spotter for you. Now, the next two lessons I've learned from experience with using a Finnish sniper, but they apply to all snipers. It works better for the Finn sniper, but certainly something that should be paid attention to when you're using snipers in any faction. Now, the first thing is that you should never be afraid to fire and manoeuvre. And in fact, when you think about it and you think about what you know about sniping and history of World War II and just combat in general, is the idea that if you fire continuously from one position, you're much more likely to be killed. And snipers would, the expert snipers would often be marked out, unless they're dug into a nice little sniper nest, in changing position after each shot so that the opponent can't call down mortars and artillery barrages and that kind of thing on them to flush them out. Very vital part of sniping tactics. And you should bear this in mind in your games of bolt action. From a, a sort of two standpoints, from survivability and from optimizing your target options. So in terms of survivability, often I see people, especially my opponents in competitive games, if they're not that experienced, they're just getting into tournament play and that kind of thing. They'll have their sniper in a nice position and I'll be encroaching on that sniper, they're popping off shots. And then I will take that sniper out in a charge or I'll get close enough to hose him down or my mortar will be creeping in on a six up, on a five up, bang, get him on a four up and he doesn't move. So the first things first is your sniper is not getting loads of kills, he's not taking loads of units off the board, loads of models off the board, because he only gets one shot, he only hits on a three up, and then he's killing on a three up, a four up, or if it's a veteran unit, a five up. So he's much more valuable to you, alive and able to reposition, and able to sort of wait it out, and wait out the game, being patient as a sniper for that optimal shot. If you keep your sniper alive turn three, that gives him, the, by dashing him back in the face of encroaching forces and just sacrificing a shot for the turn, he's much more likely to be able to pick off that officer that's exposed themselves to support a unit in an assault on your lines. He's able to pick off that flamethrower. You know, live to fight another day with your sniper. Big, big part of getting the most out of them. It's a six or seven turn game, so keep that in mind. The other part about firing and manoeuvring is Often people like to sneak mortar teams behind obscuring cover, hide units behind, like officers behind obscuring cover where their bubble can still affect units. Now, if you've got a sniper on a nice flank, well, relatively forward deployed, but relatively safe, and again, you bide your time, you see the opportunity to reposition, then you can dash into a nice bit of cover, maybe a bit of heavy cover when you're already in soft cover, maybe climbing up a level of a ruin, something like that. And that puts you in that position where you can now see that vulnerable weapons team, pop them off, and that's a dice out. Of them. Now, this takes me on to my third key point about snipers. And that is that you uh, are looking to take heads with this guy and position him where he can take heads. And this is a sort of long game idea, okay? You want to be getting dice out as quick as you can from your opponent from the back because every dice out of the back obviously gives you an initiative advantage in the game, which is... A big part of winning games but you know sometimes it can be tempting oh i'll pop that lmg uh, in that veteran squad so on and so forth but really the best use for your sniper is to try and claim a couple of scalps over the course of the game if you can get two dice out of the bag and not lose the sniper yourself he will often have contributed to winning you a game you know, it really will be a sort of soft factor to your success 
So again, positioning in order to claim those scouts, shoot those vulnerable weapon teams, and just make sure you get in those angles. So fire and maneuver, just as it is in real life, a big part of sniping in bolt action. My next tip is again about positioning, but this time area denial. It can be really tempting to pop your sniper off in a jewel or at a spotter or so on and so forth in the first dice of the game. But that dice can be much better spent on ambush. For example, your opponent's going to probably have two or three units, especially in a game where it's first wave. Your sniper can be in a position where it can shoot units as they run onto the board with a 36 inch range and being able to be deployed up to half up to the middle line. That's not a problem for you at all. And so if your opponent doesn't have a sniper, doesn't have a way to sort of pick this guy off in the first turn, then you can shoot that Panzer Shrek team as it runs on first wave. You can shoot that officer. You can really throw a spanner in the works by popping them on ambush and just having this area denial that can really throw off the order in which your opponent brings on units because, you know, common tactic, oh, I'll just run my officer on as one of my early dice behind this bit of cover so that, you know, I can keep my powerful units, my tank. We've got that sort of Mexican standoff situation often with first wave games where both people want to bring their tank on last, both, both people want to bring their veteran infantry on later on. I don't really want to give away their positioning until later on. And they like to bring those sort of soft dice on, the Panzer Shrek team, so on and so forth. They would like to bring those on early. Well, if you can position your sniper in a spot where he can cover a lot of that back table edge. Your opponent's shut down from bringing units on that back table edge, or it's a risk, or they want to bring on other units first, like veterans to try and, try and tempt you to shoot. You don't pull the trigger. They try and bring on another unit. And before you know it, you know, they've either brought on their units in an order that isn't optimal for them, or you've claimed your first scout. So just a really cool top tip, especially on first wave game setup. Now, the final tip I want to make is about self-restraint in your target prioritization. And again, this is a tip that we can take from our understanding of real life uh, combat from historical accounts and so on and so forth, is the idea that it's often the inexperienced troops that suffer the wrath of a sniper. Veteran troops, those who've been around a little bit, know their way around the battlefield. They're much more like much more likely to avoid being picked off by a sniper because they know to keep their heads down and so on and so forth. And this is a fundamental part of the way bolt action and the, the wounding mechanic works in bolt action. And they explain this in the rule book. Veteran units know when to get their heads down. They're just more likely to essentially dodge or survive incoming fire. There's no body armor on these units unless you're a Soviet engineer team. And therefore, it's not the more experienced you are, the more bullets you can survive and the more wounds you can survive. It's just the fact that you're actually less likely to be killed by accurate incoming fire, which is essentially what hits are in bolt action. And that is the same mentality that you need to keep when you're firing a sniper. If you're shooting at veteran units, you should have the mindset that you're doing it for a pin that you need. If you've got a veteran unit on two pins because you've just hit them with a little howitzer or something, then that's a prime target for a sniper because three pins can shut them down. And if you can kill off a model, great, but you're not likely to do it on one shot on a five up. You are looking to shoot at the lower experience units. I, unless my hand is absolutely forced, will basically never target a veteran unit with a sniper. I'm always shooting for regular units. I'm always shooting for an experienced unit because that maths kind of adds up. Let's say it's a six turn game. You're hitting on three ups. Over the course of the game, you should get four hits. And if you're shooting regular units, two of those units should die. And if you're targeting weapons teams and that kind of thing, throwing a dash here and there, that wastes an order. And hopefully with a little bit of luck, you should claim those two scalps. So it all kind of ties in together here. You don't want to be shooting at veteran units unless you just really want that pin because it is not going to achieve anything and you're going to feel like your sniper's not doing much. 
be sh if you can shoot at inexperienced quantities, it's almost a guaranteed kill. And when you're playing against an opponent who loves to spam multiple dice, they love to out-dash 15, 16, 17 Soviet dice, then that is a sniper's dream because you are going to be claiming scouts. You could easily collect four of those dice over the course of the game, easily if it goes to seven turns. So yeah, be strict with yourself. However tempting it is to shoot that veteran lmg -er, just be aware that he's probably not going to die. And with that, those are my quick top tips for getting the most juice out of a sniper. Now, I'm going to talk more about the Finn sniper. They deserve their own video, which will be coming soon. Um, but with that being said, I hope you found this video interesting and entertaining. This has been the Scholar Progenium. Thank you very much for your time. Goodbye.